Hello everyone, welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3 5th edition edition. Patch 5 is here, and so it's time to roll up a new character. But first, as ever, the opening cutscenes. If you've seen them before, timestamps will be down below. Really does make you squirm, doesn't it? Right, time to build a new hero. And because we've kind of done a generic standard party in the past, I thought I would go with a role-playing theme this time round. And so we are going to play a group of fighters and melee attackers and ranged attackers, but never will any of our party cause harm with a spell because that would be blasphemy to kill and to maim your enemies is for blades and bows and daggers and hammers not witchcraft so we will only ever be attacking our foes with weapon attacks maybe occasional things like bottled fire like alchemists fire being thrown that's kind of a physical attack that's fine but never with a spell attack. And so we can cast spells, but only ever buffs. And so for that, I think the party's gonna end up being Lazel, Tav, Astarian, and Shadowheart, but Shadowheart never casting a class, uh, a harmful spell, because that would be blasphemy to the ways of the true warrior. And so let's build a hero for that. And so this is our hero today. This is a halfling, and since it's not a hobbit, it's a halfling. It's not Frodo, but Frobo, because we are taking the soldier background. We have gone the subclass Strongheart Halfling, so we get lucky. All of our ones will be re-rolled. Brave, we have advantage on saving throws against being frightened. Plus two dex, Strongheart Resilience, resistance against poison. Racial speed of 25 and constitution plus one. Then for our class, we've gone fighter with the archery subclass. So off the back of having bow for our previous solo campaign, knowing that Shadowheart's going to have a great sword and Astarian is going to do the rogue thing, I think an archer fits in quite well. Skills, I've decided to go acrobatics, athletics, history, and intimidation. Trying to go away from just having always the same stuff like perception, always very useful, but if we can kind of vary things up just to keep things interesting, I'm all about it. 
And then for our abilities, because we're going a dex build rather than a strength build, we've gone 10, 16, 14, 10, 12, 14. So with that all done, we can venture forth. Tell me, who do you dream of at night? We dream of this halfling lady. And after the intro cutscene, we will carry on. Of course, timestamps below. And that was the start of a really bad day. Still telling us that the Mind Flare parasites are going to consume us, but hasn't happened yet. So, here's Frobo on the boat. Knocked out, but ready to get up from the sludge. 
And so we're up and about. The very first thing we're going to do is make sure to remember to come to these high spots where there are some chests and other items that we might be able to make use of. Because potions benefit us, I'll be able to use them as opposed to things like scrolls that do attacks that we can't take advantage of because attacking spells are not blades and other ways to deal with our foes. Okay, that's all the stuff we want from there. We can get running over to this side because there's a corpse up the top as well as this guy down here. And while we get that stuff, let's go over the rules that I previously had and what's changed. So this is my quick list of the rules that I've been using previously. And so just to run through them really quickly for my fifth edition version of Baldur's Gate 3. Food doesn't heal. Now that is mechanically true now. Food does not heal you in game, so we don't have to worry about that. And food and water required to long rest. That is true as well. You now require a certain amount of food in your inventory to, able to be able to have a complete full rest. No fast travel. Rune circles required to get to camp. There is now a different kind of camp in each different scenario. So if you're in the temple, you'll go to a temple camp. If you're in the under, underdark, you'll go to an underdark camp. So we'll see how we go for that. I might still do it that you have to get to the rune circle, but then that will take you to a different camp when you get there. Shove is an attack action. We can see here, shove is still a bonus action programmed in the game. So if we use shove, it will consume what I would say is my full action. So it will use my bonus action and I will forfeit my full action. Disengage is an action. We can see here that disengage is now an action, which is nice. It has been divorced away from the jump. Uh, classes can cast class spells only. Uh, I'm not sure if the other classes would have any spell casting this run anyway, but it will mean that Shadowheart the Cleric won't be able to cast any spells that aren't on her spell list. Ability checks for Scrolls of Revivify will still be in place. No saving, no rerolling, and permadeath. That will also be in place. So if the characters die or if the run comes to an end because the characters die, that will be it. No reloading, no do overs. Initiative for everyone during combat will remain. No sending to camp, no magic pockets will remain. No weighted dice rolls will remain. No casting two leveled spells in one turn will remain. That's things like Shadow Heart having Healing Word as a bonus action. And if she does that, she cannot cast a leveled spell as her main action. No fleeing to camp. And then we don't need to worry about the action economy for the wild, druid wild shape because we will not be having a druid this run. So we'll take that stuff off of them, climb up here, and for the first time, we can jump over there. I'm also going to jump over this fire to try and avoid taking any unnecessary damage. And this dead thrall has some gold and a scroll of mage armor. I don't think we'll be casting that for ourselves, but what we can do is just hop down here, if we can find some space. And we can just use this restoration pod, get all of our health and resources back through this effective tutorial time. So for now, it's going to be a case of making sure we're looting everything that we can, even if we can't cast the spell scrolls for things like um, Firebolt and whatnot we can still benefit from the sale of such goods to fund better equipment and the like. So with all of that done, let's head up here. And there is everyone's favorite, us. If you don't know what that means, I'll try and show you in just a moment. But first, chests need looting. Always be looting chests. Don't know what strange alien creatures were doing with chests full of gold, but hey, that's their prerogative, not mine. More spiked bulbs. And then we've got this guy, Minarth, having a bad time. Brain quivers in expectation. Please, 
before they return. They return. Uh, you sound afraid. Why are you afraid? So many enemies. And what? What? What's going on? Who are you? Remove us from this body. From this case, free us, please. All right then. Gently prize the thing from the skull. And so here we can see the new dice rolling interface. It shows us directly what the difficulty class is. So we need to get a 10 after all modifiers. We roll a d20 as you classically would in Dungeons and Dragons. And we can see that from our dexterity being 16, we have a plus three here. So we are gonna roll and add three to that number. 15 plus 3, 18, we pass that check. It's nice to be able to see exactly what's going on with the checks now, rather than the kind of vague mystery. ...from the skull, but you notice an opportunity. You could cripple the strange creature, making it more subservient, should it prove a threat. Let's mutilate the brain. Again, the same check, but now the difficulty class is 15. And that's not going to do it. It's very gross, isn't it? And that has not gone well. But really, where did those feet come from? There's more foot than there is brain. And it's not very happy with us. So we've rolled a higher initiative. Newborn. Gathering is bearing disadvantage on attack rolls, lowered armor class and hit points and cannot take reactions. Well, that's very nice in a tutorial, isn't it? And we miss that. But they miss as well, which is nice. Otherwise, could you imagine if you died at this part of the combat. I have no idea what it's to hit ratio is. But fortunately, that's not our problem. So, we will not be recruiting us today, it seems. But just down here and around the corner, we will find Shadow... Uh, not Shadow Heart, Lazelle first. And we can recruit Lazelle to our cause. Jump over here. Red dragons with 256 HP at level 1. Certainly not something we need to be worrying ourselves about. And here waiting in ambush is Lazel. Abomination. This is your end. Your head throbs and your skin tingles. Visions rush past. A dragon's wing. A silver sword. And a flash of your face seen through the strange woman's eyes. Oh. <sighs> My head. What is this? <sighs> Squaw. You are no thrall. Blacketh blesses me this day. Together, we might survive. Imps block the path forward. You will assist me in destroying them. We must reach the helm before we transform. Yes, let's be doing that. First, we exterminate the imps. Then we find the helm and take control of the ship. We will address the matter of a cure for this infection once we reach the material plane. Because being out here in the Nine Hells, not ideal. So here we've got a bunch of foes. Because we killed them so efficiently with our sneak attack. It's not sneak attack like a rogue, but you do still get advantage if you're attacking while unseen. And they are surprised, so they do not get an action on their first turn in the initiative. Thank you, Lazel. We're going to just follow up with the same trick. 
Very nice. You proved surprisingly adequate in battle. Yes, adequate. Now, to the helm. To the helm after we loot everything that we can find. Because, oh boy, we're going to want as much spare weaponry and cash and all the rest. Also, this guy here has a light crossbow, which does 1d8 piercing damage. And currently, we are equipped with a short bow for 1d6. So we'll swap that out. Immediately give ourselves more damage output. And then there's a few dead creatures around here that we can expect to have some stuff in their mind flare pockets. Void bulb. Potion of healing. Caustic bulb. Void bulb. I'm going to leave the skulls. I don't think I need those. Otherwise that's all done. We haven't been injured so we don't need to use the restoration pod. On my way. And then once we get up here just a quick shot of the dragons doing their thing. Let's try and avoid that if it can be helped. There's a thrall here. You can find a spare dagger. If you're playing something like a rogue and you want to have the bonus offhand attack, that's very handy. Not sure if these imps and thralls have anything of use. Another short bow. And then just at the top of here, there are two more imps to worry about. simple stuff. I feel like we either got way better or perhaps I've never had such a good attack roll stat this early because previously it would have been without the archery fighting style so maybe a plus three rather than a plus five which is making things much easier. A little cash here and then at the end of this corridor we have this strange membrane to worry about getting through. Go on, you guys can do it. Why are we stuck? And after we get through this, we will find the third member of our party. If you've come through this early access before, you'd know that in previous times, you weren't able to save Shadowheart from this pod. Nothing without knowing it. But things might be different now. Knife flickers in his eyes, but he seems totally unaware of his surroundings. Poor fool. Wonder if the gods are watching me. We'll be back for you, Shadowheart, don't you worry. And we can force turn based mode here. This intellect devourer is gonna have to slow way down. Target is too close for an effective ranged attack, so that's fine. We'll switch to the sword. They miss us, which is great. And we're on shared initiative here. There's a massive hit with the great sword. And another miss, very welcome. That's nice and swift. Let's just triple check. Uh, options. Weighted dice is off. That's good. That's what we wanted. We don't want the random number generator assisting us in our efforts. And over here, we find some gold and a key. Oh, wait. Mugwort, one camp supplies. Looks like we'll be taking the random plants we find after all. I had intended to just leave them if they weren't going to be worth anything to us for crafting and the like. But if they're going to be camp supplies, I'm all for it. Over here we've got some jewellery and some scrolls. We'll take those. I'll take that. And then in this elaborate reliquary... 
We have an Eldritch Rune. But for what? Let's check this strange console over here. The console appears dormant. Then put the strange plaque we found in the, the socket on the console. To life. Hey Shadowheart, how you doing? Not great, it would seem. I thought that damn thing was going to be my coffin. Thank you. Your mind lurches into her thoughts. Her gratitude is mixed with wariness. Because you have a gift with you. You keep dangerous company. I mean, it's kind of what we need in a fight like this. Looks like there's plenty of fighting ahead. Let me come with you. We can get off this ship and watch each other's backs along the way. Sounds good to me. Shadowheart. Frobo. Uh, what was that? It's nothing. Trust me. Enough of this chatter. We need to get to the helm. Now. She's right. Lead on. All right. And so we have three in our party. Uh, N, please. Let's get on with it. With Shadowheart here, equipped with a mace and a studded shield. Although, much like our fighter, she has 10 strength and 15 dexterity. So, with a mace, she's only getting plus two to hit. You see here on melee attack, because she's proficient with the mace, but she doesn't have any strength to back it up. However, if we give her the dagger we found, then we can equip her with that, and you'll see that the melee attack has gone up to plus four, because she has two from her proficiency, and two from her 15 in dex, which is much better for us. I did not know that button existed. We also have her Gambit of Spells, as well as her Blessing of the Trickster. Right. But most of that we won't be worrying about for a little moment. And after we take our first long rest, we will change out of her aggressive spells for unaggressive ones. We are nearing the helm. Once inside, do as I say. Who put you in charge? I'll trust my own judgment. I wonder what that translates to. The other thing I want to make sure we do is, did Shadowheart have a bow? She did not, so we'll make sure she's equipped with that. Lazel starts with a short bow and a long sword, and we have a long sword and a light crossbow. Do we have extra light crossbows? No, that's fine. So, with everyone as best equipped as we can be for right now, we can come through here. Nice step. And then we find a little skirmish going on. And that is why helmets in ancient battle never had horns on it, because... Pawns on a helmet really just give your opponent some leverage on something to grab onto. Alrighty. So, we're in battle. We've got the little guys all around us. And then up here, the Mind Flayer is attacking Commander Zalk. So let's deal with the stuff directly around us first. We have Lazel up with her great big sword. That is not a problem. We'll take some spare supplies and move up as far as we can to the next foe. Let the other imps come towards us. That's fine. We need to get out of here. 
Shadowheart isn't going to get up for dagger range, but we do have our ranged attack. And we'll spend what other speed we can. So much for peace. Have to keep Throw a bow. Incredibly efficient. And we'll take that along the way. And move forward as much as we can. So then there are just these two. Now, previously, if you ever tried to kill Commander Zalk, you would know that you didn't get anything for your efforts. However, that has since changed. The sword they are wielding can now be gained as a prize for this encounter. However, their armor class is reasonably high, and our damage output is not great. So let's see what we can do with some ranged attacks here. Ignore the devil. We must take the transponder. Yes, I understand we must take the transponder, but they have a big shiny sword. A lovely crit for four damage. Alright, we're gonna keep moving forward a bit just in case we do need to get to the transponder in an emergency. If this ship hits the ground, we're dead. Yeah, it's probably not ideal. Right, Frobo. If you come to here. Yeah, lots of missing. Even from the mind flare, which is the scary part. If the Mind Flayer can't make progress attacking the commander, what hope do we have? Even more crossbows. One whole damage there. Yeah, the Mind Flayer has 35 HP left, which is not a lot. And after we get... After the Mind Flayer gets killed, I think it's going to be us next. And we have three more lesser imps to worry about. Shadowheart has spent her turn. And we skipped bow, it seems. Let's see what we can do back here. Big miss. They are getting wrecked. At least we're getting what XP is available for killing all of the imps along the way. Even if we're not going to get any XP for kim killing Commander Zalek. Although he's down to 72. He's level 8. That's a bad time. This is Lazel, So... Get the giant sword out as standard. The Mind Flayer has 5 HP left. That is a bad time. Still breathing, despite everything. Right, now we just need to get up there. Fifty-six HP left on the commander. Is there any world where we can contribute to dealing enough damage for that? Probably not. So we'll give ourselves as much room as we can. Yep, that's a bad sign. When they're in range of us. Let's... Give Frobo two extra AC and keep moving this way and it would appear that 
two more guys have appeared at the front door, which is a bad time. So we can attempt to move and dash. I can't see any indicator for an attack of opportunity. Good, they did not take one. So we can dash as an action. Forward, Istic, before more dragons come. And if we dash, do we get to the transponder? We do. Never done it with Lazel before. But we're going to miss out on the big shiny sword. Maybe next time. That's not very comfortable. Amazing that Shadowheart is still just able to stand there quite comfortably. Cutscene. Oh, I was going to say, it's not loading, but we're there. And we have made it to the beach. Hells. Can't believe I'm in one piece. So, now we just have the goal currently to remove the parasite. But we will do that and see what else has changed along the beach next time. For now. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you're enjoying the series, please do consider subscribing or pressing that like button. If you have any questions or comments, you can put them down below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.